Hi, welcome back to part seven of this 12 part series on how to land that high paying job. I am your host, Jennifer Butterfield, and today's episode is gonna be about mastering interview skills. And there will be a lot of overlap with the episode that I did previously on negotiation. So if you haven't seen that episode, I highly recommend checking that one out after this. Um, but let's get right to it. I think that there are a lot of important topics to cover with mastering interview skills. And so I wanna make sure um, we, we get to everything. One of the most crucial parts of getting a job offer, they found through recruiting studies and um, salary and job offer studies that candidates who have strong interviewing skills are more likely to receive job offers and receive high paying job offers. And that is no surprise because any candidate who comes into an interview uh, and, and is effectively able to communicate who they are and share um, eye to eye what their value is that they're bringing to the table um, is, is going to demonstrate that they are not only great communicators, but they are um, good at working in interpersonal relationships, um, creating professional networking connections, and a, a number of other things. And so um, interviewing skills are all encompassing. and. Um, I think it's super important to walk into an interview um, feeling confident. And so being yourself, that is my number one thing with interviewing is wear something that you feel comfortable in and be who you are. Um, I think so many times a lot of people come into an interview and they may feel like this rigidity almost. and um, a lot of times that stems from nervousness and that is totally normal. It is okay to say, I'm a little nervous, you know, and, and to do it in a sense of, of feeling confident and, and not tripping up over it. Um, so there are a few things to think about with that in terms of what would an ideal morning routine look like before leaving the house or sitting down at the computer to engage in that first interview? Um, body posture is a huge aspect, making eye contact if it's in person. Um, and in America or um, any country where the custom would be to shake a hand, um, providing a, a strong and firm handshake, um, and, and being mindful about where to sit and, and having resumes and a pen available with you. Um, you know, oftentimes there's more than one person in an interview. And so, you know, if you're, if you're sitting down to interview with a whole panel of people, that can be a little nerve wracking. But, you know, I think it is really helpful for me to remember to just listen. Um, I usually let the interviewer uh, initiate the, the conversation and start asking me questions. Um, and I answer them as honestly and authentically as I possibly can. And one way that I, I draw upon these experiences is um, I will go over my resume and highlight the things in my mind um, that it says and that I, I think that are most shining qualities of who I am and what I bring to the table. And then as far as preparing for that interview, I cannot recommend it enough to grab a partner and sit down and take turns. So each person gets to be the interviewer and the interviewee. And so for this specific job title, whatever position I'm going into, I'll grab my partner and I will ask them to come up with a list of really challenging questions like, how did you handle this challenging situation where um, a client was really upset? Um, and, and what was the best way that you handled that? Or can you tell me about a time that you were in conflict with a coworker and how did you handle that? Or um, perhaps uh, 
a, a person who was a supervisor or somebody in authority um, and and me were in conflict with one another uh, and but there was a task that needed to happen immediately how did I handle that and so these are all really challenging questions to answer but I think when we have an opportunity to walk through the scene a few times almost like practicing for an, a scene in a movie um, and really putting on that interviewee or interviewer hat and going through the motions. I think there's so much confidence that can be built from muscle memory. And when I um, had co-founded the first business club at my community college um, with my co-founders, Devin and um, Steven, we went and created a an environment where and it was during covid so it was on zoom and um our membership had really started to bud there were probably like 15 people there at this particular event and um it was virtual and what we did was we broke people out into pairs in rooms and we gave them an opportunity to write down like a list of questions and we we provided some sample questions and ai can be a great tool to generate you know tough questions you can plug in the 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 prompt for um that particular position and tell it to pretend to be a hiring manager um, at this particular company for this role and, and ask it to feed you back um, different interview questions. And so those are just some ideas to get started, but each person taking a turn. And so I think it also helps, even if I'm being the one who is interviewed, to wear the interviewer hat. It almost takes out some of the... Um, it kind of demystifies the experience. And so like when I'm able to step into the role of being the interviewer, I get to really experience, okay, well, what would I be looking for in a candidate, you know, and coming up with those questions. And so I can't stress that enough, um, getting that muscle memory and, and going through the motions ahead of time. And so um, once I'm seated at, at, in the interview, whether that's virtually or in person, um, I often will make sure that I have water in case I get thirsty or my that my mouth gets dry. Um, and I often have this tendency that when I get nervous, I will talk a little bit faster than normal. And I, I know I'm not the only one who does this, but um, I've used this in public speaking many times. And I found it to be a really useful tool to just kind of let everything fall to the ground. And so when I when I find myself picking up the pace or maybe like the tone of my voice starts increasing and um, it could be like somewhat noticeable that I'm a little bit nervous, I will let everything just drop to the ground and take a deep breath. And so we can practice that together right now. And by doing that, I'm able to collect my thoughts and provide a response that is not so rushed. And I think that that can be something that is a, a, a striking sign of confidence in an interview is when I'm conversing with someone and I'm, I'm being asked questions and, um, you know, there's this pressure to impress upon them that I'm going to be the best candidate for this role. I oftentimes will um, remind myself that there's no urgency. And I think that there is so much power in being reminded that like, I can take my time and I can, I can answer these questions and I can also ask for some time to think about things. And I, I think I mentioned that in my negotiation strategy episode as well, but you know, there is no fault in taking some time to step away and whether it's for a salary negotiation or benefits and, and asking, can I contact you if I have any questions? regarding this. And I think it's important to go into initial interviews, especially perhaps not even getting a job offer. A lot of times I think some people walk into an interview and have this expectation, expectation that they will be offered the job on the spot. And I would prefer to receive a job offer in writing. Um, and I will say that it, it will be pretty apparent 
um, based on the length of time that the interview goes and the body language and the responses that this employer is, is providing me. Um, whenever I'm asked, do I have any questions for the interviewer? Always, always, always take this opportunity to say, yes, I do. And, and ask them a question like, what kind of education and training do you provide people in this role? Or where do you see this role advancing over time? Or how have other people in this role grown with the company or excelled in different areas to further their professional development? Um, these are all really great questions to ask a company because remember, not only are they interviewing you, but you are interviewing them and you are a very highly sought after and valuable candidate that has a multitude of different opportunities and um, you've always got something in your back pocket. And we'll cover a little bit more about that in the BatNet app episode. Um, but I will say that in terms of taking that opportunity to ask the employer or the interviewer a few questions that, that not only show that you've, you've done your research, but you are somebody who is interviewing them as well. And so um, I can't stress that enough. Always take that opportunity. Um, as so I want to talk a little bit about the STAR method. And so the STAR method stands for situation, task, action, result. And so I want to provide a step-by-step -step approach to answering behavioral interview questions. And so I, I mentioned a few of them earlier on in the video, but say I'm, I'm given a scenario on how I would handle a certain situation. And so I would identify the situation. Um, I would identify a task in which I can highlight a skill. And so when I'm talking about skills, I want to look at high impact um, responses. So problem solving, teamwork, leadership, adaptability, um, my ability to effectively communicate, my different achievements and qualifications. All of those things are elements that I can highlight when I am talking about my um, behavioral response to a certain scenario or um, situation that is presented to me. Um, and so keeping that in mind, um, another element that I think is very important to consider is to never slight a previous employer, a friend, um, anyone really, and always speak with the most integrity and respect when, when speaking about other people in an interview. Um, that's crucial. Um, okay, so breaking down the STAR method. Um, the situation. Begin by describing the situation or context in which the experience took place. So providing enough background information for the interviewer to understand the scenario. With the task, it's important to explain the specific task or challenge you were faced with in the situation. What goal or objective were you trying to achieve? What was expected of you? Action, describing the actions that you took to address the situation and accomplish the task. And remember to focus on your individual contributions and steps that you personally took. Highlighting the skills, the strategies, and the decisions you employed. Finally, share the outcomes. And so this is the result of the STAR method. And so in terms of what happened as a result of your efforts, using um, quantifiable measures whenever possible to demonstrate the impact of your actions. Positive results are particularly important to showcase. Now, in terms of challenging questions, and we covered a few of those in a little bit earlier, but it, as far as explaining gaps in employment or weaknesses, transparency and honesty is very important. Now, I highly recommend preparing and doing research ahead of time to 
find the nuances in what exactly um, might come up in your particular case and how you would feel most comfortable answering that question. Um, if it's a medical reason, that is a great thing to say. I, uh, I took leave for a medical reason. Um, so those are all important things to consider as far as weaknesses go. I, I invite you to look at like a list of soft skills. And just to name a few soft skills, there are interpersonal skills, uh, communication, initiation, stress management, problem solving, time management, conflict resolution. And so looking at a few of those and maybe asking oneself, okay, what are two or three of those that I would feel comfortable talking about openly as areas that I can work on? Um, and I, I think too, it's important to acknowledge that I'm not going to be perfect at everything. Um, I am a human being, I am fallible, but on a professional level, I do want to put forth my best self. And so I can offer an example of where I may have had an experience in, a, in the workplace setting, um, that didn't showcase the best or, um, most ideal, uh, response to a particular scenario, highlighting one of those soft skills and, and talking about what I learned from the experience. And I think that that's really what a lot of employers and interviewers will look for is if I am someone who has made a mistake in a particular area, talking exactly how I, talking about exactly how I made corrective measure, identified the problem and grew from that experience so that it didn't consistently happen again. Um, so I want to kind of cover the, the basics of what we talked about tonight. And um, one of them is doing research ahead of time. And so that might look like researching company trends, learning about the company, learning about the industry, um, talking to people who have maybe worked for the com company. A lot of times if I have been in a university or a professional organization on LinkedIn, it's a great tool to find different people who have gone to my university or uh, been a part of a certain organization that currently work at the, the company that I'm interviewing at, um, particularly common in larger corporations. But um, I think that that can be incredibly resourceful to take somebody out to um, lunch or, or coffee and asking them questions about um, their experience working for that company. Um, and so I think it's really important to ask myself, do I want a hybrid or a virtual remote position? Um, do I want to be in the office each day? Do I want um, a, a relaxed atmosphere, gym amenities, um, really great benefits and like retirement packages? Um, all of those things are really important to consider. Like, out on what level am I working with a team each day? Um, what are the clients like? All of these are really, really important things to consider in terms of work culture. Um, and like following up on all of the topics that were covered. So coming in with research, understanding enough about the company um, to be able to highlight certain things to demonstrate that I did my research and my homework ahead of time. And oftentimes I've had employers tell me that I was one of the only candidates who actually took a genuine interest in the company and expressed an accurate perception of what the company's values, their mission, and their, um, their history was like. And so, that ended up landing me the job. And so I can't stress it enough. Do your homework, walking into the interview, be yourself, um, practice ahead of time, right? So grab a partner and take, take turns being the interviewer and the interviewee and go start to finish. Um, it's a good indicator in terms of, um, 
the amount of time, right, that I'm spending in the interview as well as the body language and the um, facial expressions and the tone of voice that the interviewer is uh, communicating to me non-verbally, it's equally as important that I show up with direct eye contact, a strong firm handshake, uh, if that's culturally appropriate, um, confident posture, dressing professionally, being prepared, having a pen and different resumes um, to hand out to a potential panel of interviewers. Um, and then once I'm in the interview, listening intently, practicing um, listening in such a way where I am able to respond thoughtfully, um, removing any sense of urgency and, and letting things just fall to the floor if I find myself a little nervous and speaking quickly. Um, and then to utilize the STAR method. And again, that is situation, task, action, result. And I can use that as a behavioral response to uh, an interview question um, where I'm given a scenario on what I've done in the past or what I would do or how I would handle that situation. I can break it down that way. Um, in terms of what I should do post-interview, I, I, I also utilize writing a thank you note via email as soon as 24 to 48 hours have passed post-interview just saying thank you so much for your time and I appreciate your consideration in my candidacy for this position. Please let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to hearing from you in terms of a follow-up. Um, sometimes if there is a response where I'm given an offer, great. That is a excellent um, next step in the interview process. Oftentimes, people will want a second interview, maybe in introducing the candidate to the um, next level of supervisory uh, executives. And, and so oftentimes, I'm, I'm invited to come in person. Um, or perhaps there is a declination in terms of not moving forward with my candidacy, in which which I always respond um, saying something along the lines of, um, thank you so much for considering me, best of luck in finding the right person for the role. And if there is ever anything in the future that you feel I might be a great fit for, please keep me in mind. Um, it's so important to follow up and respond thoughtfully and being mindful of maintaining professional relationships over the course of the entire interview process, even if that means I didn't get this particular job. So, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. And next week I will be talking about building an online professional brand. And I have a lot of personal experience with this and I'm very excited to share the tools and tips that I've picked up on the way um, and hopefully help um, anyone who's watching apply them into their own lives. I do find that uh, building a professional brand online is one of the um, best ways to find job security and a great side hustle. Um, oftentimes it can become a full-time thing and I will be looking forward to sharing that with you next week and if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel and you found this video helpful, please do um, by just hitting the subscribe button below. Thank you and have a great week.